Hey guys, welcome to the fourth lesson on WCF using C Sharp. This lesson is going to be pretty quick and pretty straightforward. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at um, this concept called instance context mode. As you can see right here, I have this behavior marked on my service implementation. But we'll take a look at that here in a second, so I'm just going to comment this out for now. So up until now, we just created a basic service. Um, if you watched the last video, which we um, looked at a metadata exchange endpoint, I removed that from here. So this is back from our original project with our interfaces, our client, and our service. If I run this program, this is pretty basic. It opens up the server. I type go, and it gets me a list of the product numbers. And if I type a product number in, like BB, seven four two one I get more specific information about that product and obviously this is transferring over the server and getting the information from our AdventureWorks database so what I want to look at in this lesson is like I said instance context mode and basically this is how the service handles or one thing it uh, what's the best way is it? this is how, by using this property we can tell the service what happens when you know when we have multiple um, multiple clients connecting to the service? Like what should happen to the service when pe multiple multiple people are connecting? And there are three options that we can pick from in this specific property. We can pick to per call, which I have it right now, which is also the default, per session, and single. Now let me just quickly go over each of them. So. If I say my service is set up to per call, that means every single time a client, any client, calls something in my service, calls a function that does something to my service, some kind of service operation, every single time they'll get their own instance of the service. So the service pretty much creates its own instance for that call. So if I have any fields or properties inside of my service, they'll be recreated every single time something gets called and I'll demonstrate that here in a second by creating some kind of fake you know integer that we'll mess with or something and this is gonna apply to the other things down the road so yeah per call we get a new fresh copy of the service every single time a call is made the second one is per session oh, let me just per session per session basically says um, if well first if your service supports sessions basically what happens is every individual client will get their own um, instance of the service so basically when you, a new client comes in they'll create their session with the service and then they'll maintain that session throughout the duration of the clients life so um, so using this method if I have some kind of fields or properties in my service the each individual client will maintain their own copy of each of those so if I make different function calls to the service as a client and I'm accessing some kind of private data or something um, that data will be will, will stay the same I'll get the same data for each um, call that I make if, if I'm on the same session that's so that's per session once this session ends the session will get recycled and there are ways to put caps on this of how many sessions can be um, going on at once and things like that the last option we have is single and single basically says this is what I fa single is my personal favorite I love using single um, and we're gonna be using single for most of our applications that we do that does not involve uh, um, adventure works and what basically single says is um, every client out there, no matter who's making the calls, they all come to one one instance of the server. The servers, the service is only going to have one instance, and every single client will use that. So if I have a, if I have an integer value, like if I had like int x and I had functions get x and set x. All the clients will be using the same integer x, so they'll be changing this same x. Whereas if I was using per session, every client will have their own x. Or if I was using per call, 
every call would have their own X. So using single, every client uses the same instance of the service. And this is important. And because like when we're building like our login application or a chatting application, and I log into my application, if I need some way to keep track of all the people who are logged in, so I could use maybe a list, a dictionary, I don't know, there's lots of things I could do. So if I were to create a list and store all the people that are logging in into that list, um, if I use single, that means that all the people could, um, all the people can get the data of who's in the list. So if one client wants to retrieve, oh, who's who is logged into the server right now? He can get all the people and show it onto his friends list, and someone else could get their and show it onto their friends list. If I were to use per session doing that, everyone will get their own list. So the only people that you would see on your list was yourself because everyone else has their own copy of their lists. So if this can, hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much, and we'll look at that more in the future. But the thing with using single is it gets kind of tricky. Now we'll have to. There's another property in the service behavior that we'll look at called um, concurrency mode. I'm pretty sure, yeah. And um, basically, if we have a single server like this, a singleton, and we have clients making calls to it, what happens if multiple clients make a call to let maybe say list products, and this takes a few seconds to actually return? What happens in that situation? Now, basically, how it's set up by default, I'm pretty sure. Uh, don't quote me on this. Um, I'm pretty sure that the clients will have to wait until the, w another client finishes. Because if I'm using single, that means there's only one instance of it. So if people are making calls to it, they're going to most likely... Hmm. I probably shouldn't be saying this unless I'm positive. I'm pretty sure they'll be waiting. It might have an internal threading system where it does it. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it actually, it all depends on what is set by default. And I'm pretty sure single is set by default. So yeah, so I'm pretty sure it will wait. It will have to wait using single. So if you're using single in, I mean, instance context mode, like I said, every, every client shares the same um same shares the same instance of the service and then it I think the default value of concurrency mode is single also meaning um, that there's only gonna be one thread to manage it all and I'm probably confusing you guys right now so don't worry about that just throw that out we'll look at that in another lesson so but for now all you need to worry about is it, um, single means that um, everyone shares the same instance of the server there's only one instance Per session means that each client will most likely get its own instance of the service. And per call means that every call will get its own instance of the service. And like I said, um, to put to add this um, behavior to our service, by default it's per call. Um, I just go to my service implementation and I add this service behavior attribute. And inside parentheses or whatever, I can just add in this instant context mode property and set it to whatever I want. So let's go ahead now and just quickly look at all the different versions. So we'll start with per call. So for this program to test this out, we're just going to do something basic. Basically, um, this is not the best way to do this. This is just for testing purposes. I want everyone to make sure they know that this is just for testing purposes. This is not the best way. I, I want to keep a count of the products that we have. Um, so when whenever list products get called, I just want to add them all up and store them into, let's say, an integer pri uh, private int, and we'll call it product count. And we'll just set it equal to zero to start out with. So whenever someone calls list products, I just want to say product count plus plus and we'll keep a running count of my products total. So that's good. That's pretty basic. But now that we did that, we need to be able to see this in the client. So how can we get this product count to the client? So I'm going to, in my service contract, in my interfaces, I'm going to create a function. So I'm going to say operation contract representing a function or an operation 
and it's going to return an integer. It's going to say get product count. That's all it's going to do. So that's the interface um, uh, declaration. Now inside of my service, I'm going to right click and hit implement interface, which, which will just create this get product count function. And all it's going to do is return to the client um, product count. That's all it's going to do. So this is keeping a, a running total of my count, and then this will get it. So to test this inside of my program, all I'm going to do is once it once I type go, it prints all of them right here, and then it obviously then it asks me to enter a product number. So for now, I'm going to just remove enter a product number and comment that out. I'm not using that right now. After um, uh, actually, yeah, I'll just leave that out. So Go will do that, and then I'm just going to add in, I guess, another piece of output saying, if you enter in, maybe get. If you enter in get, it will get the, the product count instead. So I'll say, um, let's actually, let's do while. Let's put this into a loop so that we can enter it multiple times. Do while inputs. Oh, of course, I can't do that. Hold on. Okay, so I just put a loop around it. Here, let me make this more visible. Um, so all I did was I put a loop around the input so that it will keep on asking for input. That's really basic. While it will do it until so you type in exit. So until you type in exit, you can enter in go or get to get the values. So when I hit go, this will get the, the pre uh, things. And then on the service, it's adding them up behind the scenes like we just created. When I type in get, all I want it to do is I want it to say, I want it to get the value. So I'm going to say int product count equals my proxy dot. And we created a function called get product count right here. And then I'm going to say console that right line count, and it prints the product count like that. So let's go ahead and test this. So we're on per call right now. This is important to remember. So I'm going to type in go. So behind the scenes, it should have added them all up, and now we have a running count. So if I type in get, I should get the count of what we have. Of course, I did something wrong. What's wrong? Um, oh, let me comment this out also. All right, let's try that. Okay, let's type in go, and then get. And look what happens. We get count zero. But I thought that we added them all up in, on the server. But when I type in get, I got my count as zero. Let's try that again. I type in go, and then get. I'm getting count zero. What's happening? Behind the scenes, I'm adding up this product count, and get count returns that. It should be whatever how many values we have when we add it up. And the reason why this is happening is because we're using per call. I told you every time you make a call to the service, the service creates its own um, instance of the service. So this is being recreated every single call. So when I get when I call get product count, it created a new service and then it, it's only returning zero because that's what we said. This it, it really never knew that this even ran. Okay, so that was per call. Now, 
we could try per session and per session would fix this problem because remember with per session that creates when a client creates a session then the client can use the same session over and over so per session it would fix this problem sort of if if the client were to call go and get the list products and then call get he would get the proper number but if someone else just called get a different client they would still get zero because they never called um they never called get products or list products so they never really counted for their session so with per session everyone has their own instance of the service now so per session will fix that problem where the client if I call list products I can get the count that will fix that although we have a problem where clients other clients would be able to get the count because they didn't call list products because per session is for each client but however there's another problem we're using in this example we're using basic HTTP binding and that this binding does not support sessions so we can't do it we can't use per session in here to fix the problem so in I think in the next video we'll talk about uh, bindings and some examples of bindings and customizing some binding se uh, settings and stuff like that. We'll, and when we look at that, then we'll see other options of bindings that we can use that support sessions. You know, one off the top of my head that we could use is Net TCP binding, which I uh, I really like using. I use that for a lot of my stuff. And we'll look at what things that that supports that we can use. Um, to make some cool applications. So that, yeah, so if we use net TCP binding, for example, we could use sessions. But basic HTTP binding does not support sessions. So the last thing to try in this to, to see if it works is let's go ahead and try single. And now single, if you remember, basically means that every every client shares the same service. Everything's the same. So if I increment product count on any client, Every single client will, should see that reflection. So let's go ahead and run this now. So the service is open, go. So it counts them all up and get. And as you can see, get is now returning the count 504. Now the cool thing about single is now if I were to load another client up without even calling get, so it's not going to count, I mean without calling go, if I don't call go on this new client, I can still call get and get the count because it's sharing the same instance. This is why I like single. But some problems come with this, and I'll show what I mean in other videos. But okay, let's go ahead and open up another client. I have to find where it is. Okay, so I opened up another client, so we have another client running. Now if I call get on here, let's see what happens. That's my, that's my first command, get. And I get the count 504. So as you can see using single as an instance context mode we can you we can share data um, across clients because th there's only one service instance there's only one service instance per call creates many for every single call per session is per for per session if the binding supports the session or support sessions um, which basic HTTP does not which we're using right now which will will switch to net, net TCP and, and mess with some other ones in in the future and single like I said it does this so that that is it for this lesson we I just wanted to show this concept of instance context mode and show the differences between single per session and per call and and what this can do for us and that last thing I just want to remind you that this kind of mechanism you know probably isn't the best to, to get the products that we have and ha how we have it set up right now it's not the best because if another client calls go it's going to count up again so our product count will be doubled and that's not true but i just wanted to point out the fact of how um this instant context mode works so if you enjoyed this video and think it helped um be sure to give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions let me know in the comments Alright, I'll see you next video.